All right. So uh, background knowledge section J is adding and subtracting algebraic fractions, also known as rational expressions. I know that's the term that I've used when I've talked about it or taught it. It's usually rational expressions, but the IB used the term algebraic fractions. Don't forget your stat backs. Draw yourself a little stat box. about algebraic fractions, we're going to compare it to the fractions that you talk about in elementary school, and then have some tips and two examples. So, to start with, to add, to add or subtract algebraic fractions, we combine them into a single fraction with the least common denominator. And the more I think about it, you don't really need to have the least. You just need a common denominator. And we'll, we'll talk about all of that, but to envision this, an algebraic fraction is like the problem we had on the daily challenge yesterday, where we've got a fraction, but we have expressions, because we've got like x plus 2 and 3x minus 5 or something as the numerator and denominator. So those fractions with algebraic expressions in them. And we're, we'll talk about you know, how you found common denominators old school when you were young, and then I will give you guys my best tips to make this as painless as possible <coughs> so that you can get to it right away. Now I know we've talked a little bit about fractions, and I have definitely said, like, you don't, and you don't need to write this down necessarily, we're going to talk about this. I know I've said, like, you need to learn how to use a calculator. We're not going back to this kind of stuff, but we're just talking about it right now. So when we had to add, add these without a calculator when we were young, what denominator comes to your mind? So we've got 3 fourths minus 1 six. Like, what denominator do you think of? Two, so 2 is a good number that would go into both. For a denominator, we want like a multiple of something bigger that they both go into. Okay, third one, or 12? Okay, did anything else come to mind for anybody? Yeah, okay. So 12 is definitely the least common denominator. And when we were younger, we probably taught you to make sure you use 12. But something that definitely works is 24. Can I tell you how you came up with 24? Or ask you how you came up with 24? Absolutely. That would be the easiest way to get a common denominator, not necessarily the least, is to multiply these. 4 times 6 is 24. That works. It's not the smallest. If we used it, we'd have to reduce at the end, but it works. And that's what we're going to do today, is that we, whatever we've got for our denominators, even if they are expressions, you know, binomials, we'll multiply those denominators. And then what we'll have to do is we'll have to take that denominator and multiply it up here, and this denominator and multiply it to that numerator, and then we will have that common denominator and be able to combine all of our stuff. So we're going to get to all, all of my tips first, and then we'll take a couple of examples. So keep in mind, you may have to expand and combine like this. So we've already talked about algebraic expansion, so that could be distribution, it could be a FOIL type situation, but you will, you may have to expand that stuff and combine like terms. Um, I'm just going to add for this, it's in the numerator for that first part. You want to do all that expansion and combining. I'll talk about the denominator in a, a little bit here. After you've done all that, you've foiled, you've combined everything, you want to check to see if you can factor. 
might not be able to. But that's the, what we were talking about yesterday, where check for a greatest common factor, check to see if you can factor that. Sometimes you can't. Be extra careful with your signs, especially when it's a subtraction problem. Both of our examples are subtraction, so I'll show you how I do that so I have less of an issue, which is the most common thing I see is people when they sub subtract, they only subtract part of it. They forgot to, they forget to subtract both parts. So we'll look at that. And then the last tip is exactly what I was talking about on the last side. To get that common denominator, multiply the denominators, and then multiply the numerators by the other denominators, kind of like I showed with those arrows on that other example we talked about. I'm gonna go too fast because it's so it looks like it's just so long. Okay. So here is our first problem. We've got x minus one over three minus plus 3 over 2. So we'll start by using that multiply method to get our common denominator. Is I'm just going to multiply 3 times 2, and that one's pretty basic. It's 6. And I... I don't like to just kind of combine it right away. So I've, now I'm already getting myself down to just one fraction. The first thing I need to do is take 2 and multiply it by my, my numerator here. So I'll have 2 times x minus 1. And I know some people will start doing that distribution in your head. I'm not going to mental math that out right now, so I want you guys to see all those different steps. You will advance yourselves how you feel comfortable. I gotta keep in mind this was a subtraction problem, so make sure I have my minus in there. And then 3 times the x plus 3. So, are there questions on that process? I was helping people last hour, and I did have someone who kind of got confused and ended up doing like 3 times the own numerator, so make sure you're multiplying the denominators by the other numerators to make that happen. And now this is the part where we're going to expand and combine our numerator. So we'll start by distributing. So I've got 2x minus 2. And then this is what I would do is I would take this entire minus 3, make it a negative 3, like adding the opposite, and distribute that. If you do that, then you're not going to mess with forgetting a subtraction part. So we're going to have to subtract both parts there. So then I've got minus 3x minus 9. Now you could distribute and then do your subtraction with just a 3, but if you do it this way, then you're not going to make any mistakes. So we expanded, now we've got to combine like terms. So I've got negative x minus 11 over 6. We want to double check, can we factor this numerator? Got no greatest common factor. It's not trinomial, so I'm not going to do any factor by grouping. So I am done with that one. We're going to look at one more example. 
Are there any questions? Anything I can make clear? Do you guys do this a lot, the check? Yeah, you do? Okay. So maybe I'm doing too much here, but hopefully it'll be nice and clear then. All right. The next example is 3x plus 1 over x minus 2 minus First things first, how do I make 2 into a fraction? Yeah, I heard it. 2 over 1. And actually, this means I have a little bit less work because if I multiply the stuff on the left by 1, it doesn't change at all. So the only thing I really am going to need to do is take x minus 2 and multiply it over there. So when I multiply this way, my denominator is just x minus 2. Like I said, if I multiply this way, it's not going to change anything. So I've got 3x plus 1 minus 2 times x minus 2. Now if I take that negative 2 and distribute it, it's going to kind of take care of that minus for me so I don't have to worry about it. I still have 3x plus 1, then I've got minus 2x plus 4. So that negative 2 times a negative 2 here will be plus 4. x minus 2 is still in my denominator. So once I combine like terms, I've got x plus 5 over x minus 2. One thing that I absolutely cannot do is just like cross off those x's. And if this were like, I don't know, 6 and 2, I can't just reduce that. That plus sign and that minus sign make a group and they make it stick together. So that x is stuck with that 5 with that plus sign. You cannot separate them unless you're going to cross out the whole group with another matching group like we did yesterday on the daily challenge. Same thing with that minus sign. That x is with that 2, like connected with that minus sign, and they cannot be broken up. All right, the only last thing that I want to say, and this is not really an example, is that if you have a more complex denominator and it's something like 2x plus 5 multiplied by x minus 1, don't FOIL that. Just leave it your two parentheses because you'd want to factor it at the end and you'll just give yourself more work if you like FOIL it and have to refactor it. So if your denominator is like that, just leave it. So in your stat box, write yourself a note. What do you have to do? How do you get common denominators when adding or subtracting algebraic fractions? Just write it out for yourself so that you don't forget it. Once again, there's not a ton of space on this. So feel free to use another sheet to show your work. I ended up like doing my work. 